hit my phone while recording. I suspect we're sideways again. <laughs> Good morning, I don't know if anyone is watching. We're having some technical problems. We can't seem to get it to go. Yeah, we are sideways. We're sideways. Why in the world are we sideways? Um, gosh, Lenny. I wish I knew how to fix that, guys. Well, what if I try to... Why don't you just turn your phone? Well, I could turn my phone, but then I don't know if we can see both you and I, Richard. That's a thing. Oh, no, you might need to scoot over. I can't scoot quite as much as you. I'm not scootable. Just put the whole tripod on the table. Richard, can you sit in front of here? Yeah, I can. Okay. Anybody's watching? Oh, good. Amy's watching. Ah, oh, Amy, thank you. Thank you for the, the like. We're really sorry that this is annoyingly not working out so well today. Um, we were that? we were trying. No, you got to so right in front. Person. Yeah. Um, we were trying to make it so that we weren't sideways like we were last week. Uh, they weren't sideways, but they weren't anything. And, and we got it to be not sideways, but we couldn't get it to both be sideways and broadcast at the same time. And that seems um, sort of necessary. So we've gone back to the other way that we did it. Audi says it's all good. It's all good. Okay, we have people watching. Okay, it's a little crooked, but I think we're going to go with it. That's, that's how it's going to be. We're going to be crooked. Um, and Richard, if you have a chance, uh, to call okay, my grandmother. Let me, let me close Facebook. <laughs> okay, I have confirmation it's working. This is very good. Thank you for those who have confirmed. Oh, thank you, Amy. Amy says she'll take us any way we come. <laughs> awesome. Any way up, pull the Any way up, yeah, even if we're crooked. <laughs> let me, and Ollie can see us both. Awesome. Good. We're just, just going to go with it, except we can't really see the candles, I think, which is kind of sad. I've got candles over the top of my head. Probably. You've got them coming out of your head? Uh, Ruth. I'm putting the palm. This is our palm. This is the only palm that we have. We haven't got any fresh ones. I don't know, maybe if they're somewhere in the church, but we don't have no, them. No, we cancelled the order. We cancelled the order. So this is a dried palm bouquet that somebody gave to me. Um, made by the ladies at a church in Vaudreuil. I imagine it was the Hi, Ruth. Catholic church good. there. I put you down quietly. Um, it's really cool. I'm going to show it to you, actually, since we're still kind of organizing. Look how cool this is. This is a really good project for Sunday school next year. What do you think? Ellen, do you think you could learn to make that? I don't know if Ellen's watching. Ellen will not be watching. But it's okay. All right, so there. I don't want to set my palm on fire though. I'm not sure I can get the candles to not be coming out of your head. If you could pass my glasses though, I'm liking it. I can move one them to be next to you, and the other one I can move over here. All right. We're going to go with things as they are now. We are. Well, to be honest, we usually start at 10.16. <laughs> We're still in time just to areas, but authentic. we've been so on time. We have. So. Sorry, everyone. We're here now. <clears throat> We're Let's, here now. We start with in stillness. We should this start with in stillness. We should stillness. become in the stillness. So let's sing. Yes.
Becky, if you're watching, I can't see your texts anymore because now my phone is the one broadcasting, just so you know. Good morning, everyone. So today is Palm Sunday. It's a bit of a weird Palm Sunday, but it's Palm Sunday. Uh, so we're going to do some of the liturgy of the palms and some of the normal service. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of Bible today, and that's just how it is. But you don't have to stand for the long gospel reading. That's that's part of the deal anyway on Palm Sunday, and even more so than usual. So if you're on the email distribution, you should have an order of service, and you, you might need it a bit more than usual today. And if you're not, then if you drop a line to the Facebook page or the website, I'll put you on for next week, and you can get it then. Yeah, you get the you get the liturgy, and you get the lyrics to the songs, That's and right. all of that, so you can participate maybe a bit more easily. Exactly. So the first bit of the palm liturgy goes like this. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Dear friends in Christ, during Lent we have been preparing for the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery. On this day our Lord Jesus Christ entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph. The people welcomed him with palms and shouts of praise, but the path before him led to self-giving, suffering and death. Today we greet him as our King although we know his crown is thorns and his throne a cross. We follow him this week from the glory of the palms to the glory of the resurrection by way of the dark road of suffering and death. United with him in his suffering on the cross, may we share his resurrection and new life. Amen. And now, like we do every Palm Sunday, we'll sing all glory, Lord, and honour. So, Walter, out there, you're happy? and David, and lots of people, I'm sure. Um, all glory, love, and honor. And I told Richard that he really definitely has to sing for this one because he's English, and that just seems appropriate. I don't know. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Do you know how many verses that had in the original? Daniel asked me this yesterday after we were planning the service, so I went to check on how Wikipedia, many? which is so well known for being accurate. Guess, how many? guess, how many? guess. Originally? Yeah. No. Twelve? Thirty-six. <laughs> Thirty-six verses it had. I just thought I'd tell you that. Walter, you can make me all you want, we will not be singing 36 verses of All Glory, Love, and Honor anytime soon. Anyway, that was just a diversion. So the Gospel of the Palms of the Liturgy goes is Matthew 21, verses 1 to 11. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there, with her colt by her. Untie them, and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfil what was spoken through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey in and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee, the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to you, O Christ. I think, think we've seen, seen him. Okay. I'm going to say, I said to the Lord.
I wanted to sing the raucous song about shouting. Because, uh, because Palm Sunday to me is all about shouting and celebrations and um, the football crowd, I guess. But today, although it's the liturgy of the palms, we haven't gathered as a group, we haven't made palms, we haven't sung together in a collected building, we haven't collected our palms one after the other, and taken them to those we know who can't get out. You know, people put them in their cars, we haven't gone forth into the world afterwards, which is what the liturgy says in the actual giving out of the palms. Um, and this week, Holy Week, uh, is just riddled, it seems to me, with things where there isn't a substitute. There's nothing, there's, there's nothing we can do. And the liturgy says go forth, but, but we just can't, we can't do it. We can't acclaim as a group. You know, the busiest streets are empty and quiet. Funnily enough, the tranquil byways and, and bike paths are teeming with people, but the, you look at St. Catherine Street and it's deserted. It's like playing a football match behind closed doors. The, the, the skills are there, the running is okay, um, you know, people's skill levels are great. The game still goes on, but, but there's no passion, there's no shared emotion. There's, if you don't follow football, you won't understand, but the hope and the despair is, is not there. As a small aside to what I wrote in my talk, I've been watching this thing on Netflix called Sunderland Till I Die. Any of my friend Andrew is there in Sunderland, he can just laugh at me at this point. And for those of you who don't know football culture, it, it's a bit of an introduction. Into, he means soccer, I mean, just so, so you know. I mean soccer for those of you who don't get it. Um, it it's an introduction into the highs and the lows and the, the way that it permeates life. And But behind closed doors, it's nothing. It, it's 30,000 people coming together and singing together. That's, that's what makes it exciting. And that's, that's not there in the Palm Sunday service too. The, the shared emotion and, and, and the hope is, is not there. And even though the crowd put their faith in the wrong things, they were, looking for, they were looking for a political leader, they were looking for triumph, they were looking for someone to kick the butt of the Romans. Um, although they were looking for the wrong things, uh, they were still looking and they were still together looking. Um, but why, why is it important that our church services and, and Holy Week uh, are not the same when there's such a tragedy in the world? Uh, I kind of tried to answer this, the question for that because when there's thousands dying and millions infected, it, it, it seems trivial that we can't gather this morning to, to worship together. But I think the answer is that it, it diminishes us. It, it diminishes our connection with each other. It diminishes our connection with God. It diminishes our ability to come together and share. And, and that, that I think is, is really starting to bite. It's starting to bite people's lives. It's starting to really affect people. The excitement, if there is an excitement of being holed up has disappeared. The, the, um, was the right word the the kind of the novelty has has really definitely gone and now there's just an indeterminate length of time left where where we're not able to come together and, and i think marie's text which i put in the email says says much of that there really is only so much cupboard cleaning and housework that that can be done as a substitute the watching things is online is okay but it's not the same as doing it with people. Singing alone is, is, is neat, um, but singing with others is, is very different. Uh, listening to the others, adjusting, creating harmonies, harmonies and nuances that you can't do by yourself. I guess I think that because there's, we missed the choir concert on Friday as so many people have missed concerts. And one time in, in I think it was Thanksgiving choir, George Almond and I were the only men and we sang How Great Thou Art, which we'll sing later. You probably remember, I yeah. guess. And, and, and we'll sing it again today to remind ourselves that still in despair, the strength of God is there, the majesty of God is there. We, we rightly acclaim that. Anyway, when you ask George how he was, uh, he would always smile uh, and he would say, bearing up. Uh, that, that was his, his stock answer, I guess. And bear, bearing up is, is to endure with fortitude and strength and, and to make the best of a, a difficult situation. Uh, and he smiled with gentleness when he said it because he, he had borne much, endured much, 
uh, and, and he, he liked choir and he knew that there was a real blessing in coming to a place where the worst that could happen is that you got lost with turning your pages, uh, which did happen to him from time to time. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he, he knew, he, I think because he lived through difficult times where he really had had to bear up, uh, he, he, knew, he, he knew how to put the real things in context of the, of, the, of the things that he was enjoying now and he knew what a real problem was rather than a, a made up problem. And, and bearing up like, like so much in the English language is actually a sailing term where to get to the destination you need you have to bear up and sail as, as close to the wind as you possibly can. And it needs skill and it needs judgment and it needs focused concentration and, and careful watching. You keep having to adjust it. It's a real fight, you know. You, you think you're going and you, you're not quite, so you adjust back a bit, then you adjust back a bit the other way. You see the sailboats from a distance and it all looks serene, but there's a, a million small adjustments and paths. Uh, and it's so much easier not to try and do that, to, to let the course, you know, just to let your course follow an easier path um, to, to bear off rather than bear up, but of course you don't get to where you want to go. And I was thinking how tempting it must have been for Jesus to choose that easier course. Um, there was a triumphal celebration, the crowd shouting and cheering, creating a stir. You know, it's the stuff of parades, it's the stuff of, of groups together, of excitement, bodies close to each other, the smells and the chatter. But it's also the stuff of celebrity and ego and popularity and, and how tempting it must have been to divert away from that path that he knew he must follow. Uh, but he didn't. He, he entered into Passion Tide. He, he had that time where, as I said a few sermons ago, that passion is that things were done to him. He, he was passive in the face of it. He wasn't deceived by the palms and the accolades. Uh, and in the week to come, rather than the big crowds, mostly there were, it's characterised by moments of closeness of things that couldn't be done without being present with people. The breaking of the bread, the caring of the disciples when they didn't watch with him, even when they fled, the, the restitution of Peter afterwards, the conversations of the cross with the criminal and with the disciple he loved saying, behold your mother, and to the mother, behold your son. I was thinking even the Roman soldiers, uh, they they were together, they were they were gambling for his clothes, but you know, I can just imagine them sitting around and, and you know, they they were a group, they were chatting, they would have been that they would have been interacting with each other. So there were all these moments of closeness and moments where deep understanding was shown. These moments where he held the course of sacrifice and love um, that we so poignantly remember in communion week by week. And of course the, the remembrance of the institution of the Last Supper on Monday Thursday where we would share that communion, share the washing of the feet if we do it, share in the stripping of the altar as the church goes dark and really enter in, share again in the living of Christ's story. But that's not what we can do this year. Um, so we sing our praises as, as best we can, and as best we can, collectively and individually, um, within the constraints that we've got, we go forth into the world and we enter into Holy Week. But we're reminded always that we're diminished without the presence of people, just as we will be deeply diminished by the absence of God who, who showed in that story of sacrifice and love of Holy Week that he will bear all for us. So in some ways there is, there is no substitute for Palm Sunday, for Monday Thursday. Uh, I'm sure Easter Day is going to feel pretty weird as well. There just isn't one. There is no substitute for coming together and gathering together. And sometimes that's just how it is. We have to make the best of it. We have to bear up. Amen. Just being quiet. It's okay. That's that's the thing. That's one of the things. It's a, Marie just looked at me. Like, saying, what's next? What are you doing? <laughs> what's next? And it is one of the differences between being online and being being in the church. That if you're in the church as a group of people, it, it's it's obvious to take a minute of silence. You can see that it's just quiet. It's just still. And of course, it's not the same as that when when there's not people looking. 
So that was just a moment of quiet before we get into the, the readings for the day. First reading is from Psalm 31, verses 9 to 16. Be merciful to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eyes grow weak with sorrow, my soul and my body with grief. My life is consumed by anguish, and my years by groaning. My strength fails because of my affliction, and my bones grow weak. Because of all my enemies, I am the utter contempt of my neighbours. I am a dread to my friends. Those who see me on the street flee from me. I am forgotten by them as though I were dead. I have become broken like pottery, for I hear the slander of many. There is terror on every side. They conspire against me and plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hands. Deliver me from my enemies and from those who pursue me. Let your face shine on your servant and save me in your unfailing love. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the second reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 to 9. The Sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. The Sovereign Lord has opened my ears and I have not been rebellious, I have not drawn back. I offered my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pulled out my beard. I did not hide my face from mocking and spitting because the Sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring charges against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me. Who is he that will condemn me? The word of the Lord. I like the bit of start that said the Sovereign Lord has given me an instructive tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. Oh, that was good. Now we sing Rebel Heart, mm -hmm. which seemed to fit for today.
As always, we start Holy Week with the long gospel of the Passion. It's the whole story of Easter. And it's in Matthew 27, verses 11 to 54. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Yes, it is as you say, Jesus replied. When he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge to the great amazement of the governor. Now it was the governor's custom at the feast to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At that time they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew it was out of envy they had handed Jesus over to him. When Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? asked the governor. Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called Christ, Pilate asked. They all answered, Crucify him. Why, what crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was starting, he took water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. All the people answered, Let his blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. They put a staff in his right hand, knelt in front of him, and mocked him. Hail, King of the Jews, they said. They spit on him, and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a man from Cyrene, named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golgotha which means the place of the skull. There they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots, and sitting down, they kept watch over him there. Above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two robbers were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled at insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, You who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself, come down from the cross if you are the Son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the King of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. In the same way, the robbers who were crucified with him also heaped insults upon him. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, 
He's calling Elijah. Immediately one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a stick and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook and the rocks split. The tombs broke open and the bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs and after Jesus' resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. The Gospel of Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we pray that you will stay with us through this night. We pray that as we're deprived of the presence of each other, that we might feel your presence. Pray for your strength. We pray for your touch. We pray for those who have to face the real presence of danger. Pray for the nurses, for the doctors, for those who put themselves in danger. Give thanks for their courage, thanks for their skills, thanks for the presence that they bring to those who are truly sick. We pray for those who have to make decisions.
those who make rules, those who interpret data, who try and guide and advise. Give them wisdom, we pray. We pray for those who are sick and grieve, for those with coronavirus, and for those we know in our own hearts who need your healing touch. We pray for them now, as we do day by day and week by week, offering their names to you. Almighty God, whose Son was crucified and yet entered into glory, may we, walking in the way of the cross, find it is for us the way of life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be also be always with you. A couple of weeks ago, when we were still in church, <laughs> um, we were going to sing How Great Thou Art, uh, but we didn't have, we didn't, we weren't prepped for it, we didn't have the slides for it, which is a surprise to me, um, but we don't need the slides uh, to do it in this format, uh, so Richard sent the words around. Um, it's a song that I've been seeing go around a little bit on some of the shares and stuff on Facebook and Brene Brown, if you know me, you all know that I love Brene Brown. She's been doing a little church thing uh, on Sunday evenings, so check it out on Instagram, maybe on Facebook, but for sure she's on Instagram. It's just a little prayer and um, small reflection, uh, and then she has had a guest on to do some singing, and she had this song sung by someone. I will not do it the same justice, but uh, hopefully you'll sing at home, and it'll fill your heart. I was thinking about how in the songs, in the first couple of verses especially, it talks a lot about nature and creation and thinking how coronavirus and COVID-19, um, it can't stop spring from coming. Spring is coming. Um, I went for a walk with a friend yesterday uh, morning, very socially distanced, two meters apart walk. Um, and when we walked down to the water, we saw the little shoots coming up for the crocuses and I said, oh, look, they're coming. And by the time we walked back up two hours later, they had blossomed. Um, so that was pretty cool. So spring it will come no matter what. And the birds will sing no matter what. And so there are things always to be grateful for.
valuable about this service and about keeping going as St Mary's really truly we got the feedback that people really find it an anchor and I do as well and I think Marie does too like we find it an anchor to still come together as best we can to worship. Um, Monday Thursday with the institution of the, the Lord's Supper um, it, it didn't feel like we can do that without a minister so if you do want to partake in the, the formal liturgy of of Monday Thursday. Uh, St Michael's I know is doing an online service. I I'm sure others are if you would like to go join that. Uh, we might think of something different um, or we might not. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, Good Friday we felt we would not do two hours uh, with having to limit the number of people who can do the service uh, but we'd do one hour between 10 and 11 probably very similar in format to what we usually do with some liturgy, some readings, some music uh, but just a coming together at the cross to remember. And then Easter Day, we will do our level best to celebrate Resurrection and Easter as we always do, year by year, for many years. I think, oh, and there's one more thing, which is thank you to those of you who have expressed a desire to pay your collection. Uh, this is really much appreciated, uh, especially as, truthfully, we are slightly running out of money. Um, However, hold on to it for one more week. Uh, we've set up the online giving. I've done a trial donation. I think it all worked. Uh, but Wednesday, I'm going to meet with Tom, who is our envelope secretary, as you know, so the collector of money, and Nancy, who's the treasurer, just to make sure we understand what we're doing and we've got everything bottomed out, lined up. Um, but I think I'll write an email to everybody on Wednesday, but probably we'll get the online giving up and running by next week. 
and maybe also we make it so that if you want to post your envelope through the church door at some point I'll collect them next Sunday morning but I didn't want to put that in the email just wanted to say it but we, I do come in obviously on Sundays to collect them in and just check things are there did I miss anything? do you have anything to add? no, I don't think so and we'll get better at the tech as week by week we go on. Yeah, at least we're right side up this yeah, week. Yeah, hopefully we're right side up. Uh, we tried to do it with the computer, which seemed like a great idea to us. It said live, but apparently working, not. And but working, not. but apparently not. Yeah. Computers, who said they were logical. So, you know what I think we should do? I think we should do the dismissal right now. Okay. And then play one voice as we finish and then that's it. As you wish. One voice to remind ourselves that we are still of one voice even though it's not together. Yes. So go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God. Amen. Mm -hmm. And now we sing one voice. We do.